Now I mentioned earlier, there are these two as well, picture setup. And remember, this is purely picture setup for pictures taken while videoing, not pictures while using the camcorder in its still pictures mode. So you've got this silly smile shot option of whether you want it to automatically take a still while you're filming of any smiley faces or smiley faces from people whose faces you've pre-programmed into the camcorder. I mean, it's incredibly clever that you can program the camcorder to remember certain faces um, and quite clever that it can then take a photo of them if it sees them smiling. But I can't think of any actual practical use for that, really. Um, and the other option here is what picture size you want. 20 megs, 9 megs or 2 megs. Usually speaking, the more detail you have in your photos, the better. So I would say leave that on, uh, on 20. So finally then, for these menus, you go into the record setup. And I hope you've got a cup of tea handy because there's quite a lot of these. As you can see, there's, this is the first of eight pages. The zoom mode says you can either just use the normal optical zoom that the lens provides of 12 times zoom, or you can have this sort of intelligent zoom of 25 times. And it, it gets away with that because the sensor in the camcorder has many, many more pixels than are needed to record HD video. So it can crop in on the sensor and still give you an HD picture and it effectively gives you a greater zoom. So I'm quite happy to use the intelligent zoom. However, these two digital zooms are where the camcorder is blowing up the image by interpolating and guessing at the missing information. Um, you know, it's just like blowing up any photo. The more you zoom into it, the more blurry and rubbish it gets. So while 40 times you might get away with, 700 times is just ridiculous. I don't know why they bothered putting that option on. I mean, the camcorder is inventing everything practically at that stage, so you're not really getting any more detail. It's, it's a waste of time. So I will leave it on that zoom. Recording mode is effectively your recording quality. You have this choice of this iframe mode, which is a, a sort of max specific mode as I understand it. 1080-50p is the sort of ultimate recording quality. And then you have the normal interlaced mode starting from a 24 megabit pH down to a, I think it's a three megabit HE. So obviously the lower the mode, the lower the quality, but also the more recording time you get on your memory card. Now, digital cinema mode, you'll see there is grayed out. It doesn't want me to have digital cinema mode. And there are two reasons for that, and I'll show you. First of all, it says you must set this to optical zoom instead of that intelligent optical zoom. So, okay, let's turn that back to optical zoom. It's still grayed out, well, why is that? Press it again. Ah, you can't use digital cinema in 1080p 50. Okay, let's change that to one of those modes. Right, now we have digital cinema. What is digital cinema? Well, it's only on or off. And essentially, it just means it plays with the colours a bit, makes it look a bit more saturated. So it's not really that special. And personally, I'd rather do my colour saturation when I'm editing afterwards. So I will leave that off. And I'll also just quickly stick that back the way I like it. There we go. But you know, you can play with digital cinema if you want and see if you like the look. If you like the look, just be aware, you won't be able to use that eye zoom and you won't be able to go into the 1080 50p filming mode. Pre-rec, we've already mentioned this option. Um, it's now, you can see it's, it's started it by me pressing that button and it's filming three seconds of video um, even though we're still in pause. So if I move my hand here in front of the camera, there you see my finger moving, and then I press record, you'll see it's already gone to five, six seconds, even though we only recorded for about two or three seconds. That's because it dumped the three seconds of my finger moving onto the card. Um, let's see if I can just play that back just to prove that it really did record my finger moving, even though my finger moved before I pressed record. Let's play that clip back. And there it is. See, it's now I pressed record and it still had recorded my finger. I think you get the gist of that. Anyway, let's stick it back onto setup. Come on, there we go, record setup. So that prereq's very useful um, sometimes. Face recognition, um, briefly mentioned this already. You can set it 
to recognise specific people's faces. Now, I have not tried this. I have no use for it, um, so I don't know how well it works. But basically, you, you, you stand someone in front of the camera, you press set, it remembers their face, um, and can then remember their face for later on, so that it can specifically concentrate on focusing on those faces rather than anyone else's. So it's very clever, as I say. Um, you can also allocate names to each of the recognised faces. Um, again, not a function I use, but if you want to faff about with that and putting names up, that's fine. Face framing. When the camera is set to face recognition mode for things like autofocus and auto exposure, you can have it either framing every face it sees in the photo, you can turn it off, or you can have it just highlighting the primary faces, which are the ones you've told it are the most important. Now the hybrid OIS, the optical image stabilization, um, hybrid because the camcorder has both an optical stabilization method in it, and it also has an electronic stabilization method in it. And that's why it's hybrid, it's both optical and electronic. If you want to, you can turn this hybrid off and it will just use, I think it's, well, I can't remember whether it just uses the optical or just uses the electronic, but it uses just the one. Not really sure why you'd want to do that because it's so much better. I mean, it's a superb stabilizer on this camera. I would say keep the hybrid OIS on and it really does work very well indeed. Here are some little, well, gimmicks really that you can do while you're filming. You can tell it to fade to a colour, fade on, fade off. I mean, I'd rather do that in the edit. As always, tend to shoot things just straight and muck about with them in the edit rather than mucking about with them on the original recording. And you can tell it what colour you want to fade it to. Uh, so black or white. Normally a fade to black, I suppose. Uh, but I don't use that function. Come on. Guidelines you can superimpose a set of different guidelines from a detailed grid to a lesser grid to some just um, horizontal lines. And they just give you an idea by superimposing these over the image, whether you're shooting things straight and level or not. Let's pick uh, those lines. And if we now go back, you can see it's got these little lines just superimposed over the picture. They're not recorded, but you can line up the horizon of whatever landscape you're filming with that line and then know that you're shooting level. So it's just a little helpful shooting aid. And in fact, I will just turn those off again. Now the level gauge, I mean, this is fantastically clever. If your tripod doesn't have a little level gauge on it to tell you when you've put the camera on it um, nice and level, you can turn this on and if we go back in, it actually gives you this green line and level gauge here. And then as I tilt the camcorder, you see it turns the line yellow and shows you, a bit like some sort of a aircraft display, shows you how much tilt you've got. So you know, as if you didn't know from looking at the image, but if you can line the camcorder up on the tripod and then go, right, I now know that is level. Now, um, Auto slow shutter in both 2D and 3D modes. One of the things Panasonic uh, devised for this camcorder, and I think its predecessor, was that you could um, add on a unit onto the front to do 3D filming. I haven't got that unit, I have no interest in 3D filming. But the point with these two options at the top here is that um, slow shutter, if you slow down the shutter, you let more light in so you're able to film in darker environments. The downside of doing that is that a slower shutter also means that any movement that you're filming will be more blurred. Um, so I tend to hate things in auto anyway, because you never quite know what the camcorder is going to do. So I would recommend leaving those switched off. So the next option on the list is AGS. I think it stands for something like anti-ground shooting. If you turn this on, and it is a simple on off, then if you point the camcorder at the ground whilst you've got record on, it stops it recording. Basically to stop you accidentally shooting your own feet. Um, I know even professional cameramen 
who have left the camera in record while they've walked from one location to another. And when I've got back to base, I've got a big long tape of the cameraman's feet. So if you're the kind of person who would accidentally leave the camera recording while you're walking around, then you can turn this on and it will pause the recording whenever it detects that the camcorder is pointing at the ground. I like to think that I'm intelligent enough not to do that, so I leave it switched off. And then if I do end up with a uh, film of my feet, well, I've only got myself to blame. Backlight compensation is an option you can choose while filming. And essentially, if you've got a person who is being silhouetted by a light behind them, say they're standing in front of a window, what normally happens with a camcorder is the window is really, really bright and the person is very, very silhouetted. And if you turn backlight compensation on, the camcorder tries to compensate for this by um, turning up the gain on the darker bits so that you sort of see the person. Allied to that, the next option down, intelligent contrast. And this is an option of the camcorder where if you are shooting a scene where some of the image is dark and some of it is bright, and this often happens with landscapes, you'll find that the actual land itself can be quite dark and the sky typically is very, very bright. And camcorders generally are not very good at handling wide um, contrasty images. So you turn the intelligent contrast on and it just clamps down a little bit on the highlights and it brings up the darks and hopefully gives an image that is just, well, you can see more detail in both the highlights and the darks. Now I've had a look at this on um, a, a waveform monitor and vector scope and so on, and it, it does do it. I found there were a few little artifacts in any point in the image where it went from very bright to very dark. Um, there were some funny little ramp ups and ramp downs. But, you know, it's worth playing with this and seeing whether you like the effect or not. Telemacro um, is one of the options where if you turn this on, the camcorder goes instantly to full 12 times zoom and does a sort of macro mode so you can get right in close up on something and focus only on that and everything else around it will be blurred. So it's a way of sort of highlighting a specific item in your shot. Um, but as I say, it only works and automatically goes to 12 times zoom. And I think it works from about a meter away. So you can't be any closer than a meter. Don't confuse that with the ordinary macro mode, which is when you literally stick something right in front of the screen, like, uh, hold on, let's just get out of that. I stick my finger in front of the screen. The camcorder is actually quite good. There we go, at fo there we go, that's focused in on my finger, which is only a couple of centimeters away. Um, so it's not the same as the tele macro mode. Color night view, this is an option you can turn on, again, if you're filming in very, very low light um, scenes turn the color night view on, and the camcorder does some electronic trickery to try and give you an image. But it does warn in the manual, the autofocus may not work because it can, simply can't see what it's doing. And I suspect it opens the shutter up as well, which will give you blurred images. So it might be that using this is better than nothing, but it might be that it's actually not really worth having at all. It's one of those things you need to experiment with and see if it's useful for your particular circumstances. Digital Cinema Color, otherwise known as XV Color, is a way of storing the color information in the image uh, in this format called XV Color. It is only of use if you have a television or other device that understands this format of XV Color. I have a funny feeling that Sony invented it. I might be wrong on that. But if you are going to edit, the footage, your editing software will need to understand XV color. If you're just going to plug the camcorder into a telly and play back, your telly will need to understand XV color. So unless you know that you've got devices that are compatible with XV color, I would leave that switched off.